Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. And on this video tutorial, we're gonna do something pretty different. <laughs> um, I am wondering if you remember what the flocked wallpaper black of the 1960s looked like. Or if you remember some of the paintings from the 60s and 70s that were done on black velvet. Well, we're gonna be recreating something that kind of reminds me of that. And um, we're gonna just be using these eight by 10 black canvas panels. You can also use black stretched canvas. Um, and you can pick these up everywhere. These came from Walmart. It's a pack of two, and I don't remember how much they were, but they weren't very expensive. We're gonna be using these. These are something new that I just found this last week at Dollar Tree. I don't know, maybe your store has them, but mine has not. They're from Crafter Square, and they're just these beautiful, this one looks like hammered copper, and this one looks like galvanized tin. So we'll be using some of those. We're gonna use some of those Dollar Tree Jenga blocks. We're gonna use some of these all over pattern stencils, like my super old and well-loved Victorian pattern stencil, my flower power stencil, and my lace berry stencil, along with some black chalk paste, a little glue, and um, we're just gonna be making something a little different, putting my spin on the black damask flocked wallpaper at the 1960s. So let's hop right in and get started. All right, um, these are gonna be the front piece. And before I came live, I took one out. So it's all ready to go. Let's remove this copper one, this hammered copper. The, these came from Dollar Tree, uh, my Dollar Tree. They were a dollar twenty, and I think they're pretty uh, nice. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my panels, uh, black panels, and I think I'm going to do this one in the flower power all over pattern stencil. This sort of reminds me of a damask. The um, the vintage, the um, Victorian pattern does for sure. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Let's see, let's put this off center. I do wanna make sure that everything is covered. And I'm gonna put the white uh, backing sheet underneath it. That will help me see where the edges of the stencil are and I won't get chalk paste all over my desk. Okay, so I just put my stencil on and rubbed it down if you're doing this project, you either want to fuzz your stencils really well on a tacky towel, if they're new, or on a t-shirt, a pair of jeans, a pair of khakis or something, or use a stencil that you've used a lot, like this, for example. It does not need fuzzing ever again, because I've used it so much, the, the majority of that super sticky stick is gone. Okay, and I'm gonna use black chalk paste, which might sound kind of weird to do black on black, but that's what that flocked damask black wallpaper looked like. And um, this even has slightly the feel of it. So we grab a stir stick and a squeegee, and um, I'm just going to stir up my chalk paste a little bit and put some blobs on here. I always, use too much. That might be too much. So tell me in the comments if you remember the flocked wallpaper, the black flocked wall wallpaper of the 1960s. Okay, I remember it because, and I'm just going to push the chalk paste through the holes on this stencil. I remember it because my Aunt Cindy had, um, I don't know, she was pretty with it, I guess. Um, she had a room in her house that had the black flocked wallpaper. And I remember wanting to touch it as a little girl. And my mom was like, don't touch it. But we did anyways. Um, she also had some of those black velvet paintings. Do you guys remember those? 
I know there's a lot of them that have been done of things like clowns or Elvis, but hers were a mountain and streams or something like that. Of course, I had too much chalk paste. So, I am just going to pull this off and I'm gonna throw it over here in my little tub of water until I can get out to the kitchen sink to clean it off. And I'm going to try to get the stuff on this edge off. I'll hold it up in just a second. I don't know, can you see? Yes. Can you see how the, the black chalk paste is elevated and it's a little shiny compared to the matte look of the black canvas? So you can do this on a black canvas panel. You could also do it on um, a black stretch canvas. You could do it on, on a lot of different things. Oh shoot, I don't have any wipes in here. Dang, and my hands are a mess. Look at this. Okay, so as you're hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle. Oh my goodness. This is terrible. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to have to go wash my hands and uh, use some serious soap. So, oh wow. Okay, this is what it looks like when you craft a lot, right? Okay, so before I came live, I did one of these. I'm gonna show it to you, and then I'm gonna show you the next idea. This one I did with the Victorian pattern. And I used my super old one, this one here, that I'm always saying is such a good investment in your craft closet or craft supplies because it's super versatile. I've used it on a zillion different projects and it looks terrible, but it still works absolutely just fine. So a couple of hours I stenciled this a couple hours ago and then I took it outside and I gave it a quick, just very light spray of this clear matte sealer spray. Rust-Oleum brand. And I did that just so, it, I'm never gonna change this. I just did it so that it's not gonna get on your hands if you brush it. Okay, so let's start with this cross right here that if you missed it, it came from Dollar Tree. Um, I think these are new because I haven't seen them before. Um, we are going to use hot glue for this project, but I do wanna mention that you could use E6000 if you would prefer. And I'm using my low temperature hot glue gun. Um, and we're gonna be using some Jenga blocks because I want this to be dimensional. Okay, um, these are the miniature Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree. They're in the children's section with toys and they call them tumbling tower blocks. But you could use any kind of little wood something to slightly elevate your cross. Now, I didn't want the brown to show from the sides. So, before I came live, I painted the sides. Not, the, not this part, because that won't show. And we are going to just attach a couple of these to the back of our cross. And it it doesn't matter exactly where you put it on. So you could use whatever kind of glue you want. I'm just using hot glue. And I'm thinking this could be really pretty to put in an easel. Like this, this is kind of an idea. This is also a Dollar Tree item. I would paint it black if I was gonna do that leave this out here so I can show you that idea in just a minute. Okay, so I've got two Jenga blocks on there on the long part, and I'm going to do two right here. Okay. 
I don't know why these crosses have holes on the sides, but I'm just gonna ignore that. I don't think it matters. And I wanna tell you guys that you could doll these up absolutely however you want. I did make one rolled rosette out of some black and white ribbon that I have, but I'm not sure that I would even use that. Okay, this is what the back of my cross looks like. And from the side, you'll only be able to see the black. And I feel like that is going to blend in with the black of the canvas. So now I'm gonna just put some glue on all four of these pieces. And we're going to position this. This is such a super simple project, but it has such a different look. I hate these glue strings. Okay, so what do you think? Isn't that pretty? Now my plan for this other one that will take about an hour to dry, my plan is to use this hammered copper. And to do the same thing, let's go ahead and build up the back of this right now. This is not straight. I don't care. And then I'll attach it to this other uh, canvas that we did with the flower power stencil. So I'm using four Jenga blocks per cross. And these jank little miniature Jenga blocks are called Tumbling Tower Toys. Um, they are from Dollar Tree and they are from the children's uh, toy section. But you could use any kind of little wood something to elevate your cross off the canvas. So that is what that would look like. So this is our super simple project that got my hands so messy. And if I was gonna display it in an easel, I would paint the whole easel black. So it essentially disappeared. So what do you guys think? Do you like it? You could, okay, so you could continue on with this and you could put it in a frame or you could make some little flowers and add those or ribbons or other doodads. But I am liking the simplicity of just this. I wanna know what you guys think though. Should I add anything else to it? What do you guys think? You could also stencil a word or something or design on here. Um, I did about, oh gosh, oh, about um, maybe two months ago. This is galvanized tin. This is a piece I picked up for 409 at Goodwill. And this is the same stencil, exactly. And I used white chalk paste. So I just wanted to show that to you uh, as an example that if you want, you can decorate the, um, the galvanized tin cross or even the hammered copper cross. And you could also do like some black chalk paste uh, around the edges to make it look more antique. I may try that. But I'm just loving how simple and easy this is. And um, if you decide to do it, I would love to see pictures. I did do another project last year at Christmas time, like four other projects, where I did the same idea of a, a stencil in black chalk paste over the top of a black canvas. And um, then I stenciled on top of that, uh, this awesome stencil from Magnolia that says, then sings my soul. And I also stenciled some Christmas stencils on it in white chalk paste over the top and it was it was a lovely combination. I was looking for those pieces this morning 
and my craft closet is a disaster. So I'm gonna just pull out some pictures of that and repost that along with pictures of these. And as soon as this one is dry and I attach this cross to it, I will get pictures of that one too. So if you want links, um, what could be used to fill the hole? Hmm, I don't know, it's me. I'm not even gonna really notice that. But, okay, so yes, there is a link. Um, I can send you a link to these three stencils that I think are perfect for this idea. The Flower Power, this is the Lace Berries, and this is the Victorian Pattern. And I can also send you a link to the Black Chalk Paste. And then I can send you the information about where I got everything else, including the Jenga blocks, the crosses, um, all of that. Oh, and one, one last thing. I painted the edges of my Jenga blocks just with some black paint. So, hope that you liked this project. Um, you must have so many craft projects. You know what? I have a huge closet overflowing, and a lot of them I give away. Um, but a good amount of them I hang on to so I can bring them out and show them as part of an idea at a later time. So I'm going to be looking for those and I'll bring them out when I find them. And, but in the meantime, look here in the comments and I'll get you pictures of that, of the thing, the projects that we made that have this same idea that remind me of the flocked damask black wallpaper of the 1960s. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oops.